And we're gonna kill a bull right now. Well, I haven't done the best job with the storyline so far, but this is our second day. We're heading to a different spot. We just wanted to check out that other spot. We knew there were, we've seen out there before, so we kind of just wanted to check it off the list before we came into this area. Um, and we got about five, six days worth of food. So we're gonna camp up high for the next few days. And uh, this is this is Dad's year. He's got the tag. Um, he's got a, a archery tag right now for this week, and then next week we're going to a different state, and he's got a rifle tag. So um, this is like his eighth or ninth year archery hunting, and he hasn't shot one. So that's the goal. This is, this is his year. We're going to try to get him an elk. If not with the archery equipment, hopefully with the rifle. But this week's all about archery. That area we came from this morning, uh, we had a moose in camp. It was kind of neat. And we saw one small bull up high. But there wasn't a lot of vocalization. So this is a spot we've been before. We've seen a lot of elk up here and some really nice bulls. So. We're gonna keep going. We got probably another mile of ridge line to walk and we're gonna set up camp. And then hopefully, hopefully glass up some bulls tonight. That's the plan. There's a cow mower, but I can't tell what the, I think it's a bull, but it's, if it is, it's really small. It's a bull or it's not? It is a bull. Small? Uh, no. It's, it's pretty good size, I think. That's, that's a real nice one. Six? Can't tell yet? I can't tell right now, but he's, he's big enough for dad. Crazy how fast they disappeared. Something that big. Well, we didn't feel like we really had enough time to go after those two bulls, either of them. And they kind of ran off in a direction that was further from us. So we just went and pulled a camera, a trail camera that dad had put up here week or so ago was in a little saddle 
So we're gonna check out those pictures back at camp, her videos. See what's been coming through that saddle and try to get on those bulls again in the morning. Last night we did some glassing on the back side of camp here. We spotted a couple bulls and uh, we went down and pulled a trail camera that me and Marianne put up uh, a week and a half ago. And there's a few bulls on that using the saddle. So today's goal is to maybe just get over there and sit the saddle and add a glass somewhere else. See what we can come up with. See if something can happen in the saddle this morning. Well, my brother and dad went to sit that saddle this morning. I came back over here to glass this hillside out in front of me here. Uh, try to pick up one or both of those bulls that we saw yesterday. And I found the five point. He's with a cow and a calf right now. And I'll probably just try to watch him go into bed and then we can decide if we want to make a play on him this afternoon or see what we, see what we want to do. But we at least found one of the bulls. I don't know where that bigger bull is. He still hasn't showed himself this morning. But we got a, it's only probably eight o'clock. So I'm, I'm assuming they'll be on their feet for a while yet before they eventually bed. You see where the clearing comes down? Yeah. He's in that that little patch to the right of it. So if we go get water and just maybe side hill along and then just make sure the wind is going up. But if you if you were to set up in that clearing there and I called from back in here in this pocket he just kind of came across and even if he came to the edge of that clearing but if the wind is swirly we might as well just not even try it people with an update. Why don't you tell them how you ruined our stock? It wasn't the one in the front. The guy in the front uh, didn't see the, the bull in the opening. He got there before us. Just in another half hour. We were going to set up. Well, we came in right on the contour like 60 feet, 80 feet in elevation higher, just, just so the wind was pushing up. And uh, just got in sight of the opening where we were gonna try to call them into and they were all out there feeding. One o'clock, right in the middle of the day, right in that wide open strip, sun beating down on them. So they unfortunately saw us before we saw them and uh, that was all she wrote there. So now I'm debating uh, what to glass tonight. They went to the next basin over. They're going to watch that tonight and see if they can't pick that bull up again. And then I'm just going to try to find a new bull um, to try to have a play for tomorrow. So <clears throat> Well, I've just been ridge running most of the morning. I spotted a really nice bull early on. He had about 11 cows with him and then there was two smaller bulls still in the velvet, just like little spikes. Um, but the problem is he's a long ways away. He's a couple thousand feet down, a couple thousand feet back up over a couple ridges uh, further from the truck. But then I found another bull a little closer to camp, but he's still, he's a long ways down. Um, either way, I think we're gonna have to pull the tent and um, make camp in a new spot. It'll just depend how ambitious these guys wanna be, I guess. We're moving camp to a lower elevation, dropping about 
1500 feet and we're gonna set everything up down there so we'll make a play on that hole that was closer to us and if that doesn't pan out tonight we're gonna jump over another basin and go after that bigger bull that I had uh, on the spotting scope this morning and take us a couple hours to set up camp We pursued that bull that afternoon and ended up getting pretty close but couldn't make it come together. So we went back to camp that evening and decided we would head over where I had phone scoped the bigger bull earlier in the morning. Today's Wednesday morning. We're making the climb over to where I phone scoped that really big bull yesterday. So hopefully they're doing the same thing this morning and uh, we'll get up here, hopefully get the spotter on him and maybe make a midday play. We camped on that hillside behind me, so we started hiking about an hour before dark and they went uh, into the thick stuff about 9.30 yesterday, so as long as we can get up there by 7.38, we should be able to get eyes on them if they're in the same spot. Well, we got up here this morning and found that big bull that we wanted to get a better look at. And he's a freak. He's, he's pretty cool. He was out and he went in the woods real early with that one cow. So she must be the closest to coming into heat because he left that five point out there with about, oh, I don't know, three or four other cows and then those two spikes that were with him. But after all that, there was um, one more bull down here real low and he worked up and into the timber on the other hillside here where the rest of them went so all the elk went into that dark timber and now we're just trying to figure out if we want to stick it out here to this evening to make a play on them if they come back out because if we do that it'll be a long hike in the dark so we'll have to make some decisions Maybe just hang out here for a while and see if anything comes out midday. We got some weather starting to move in, so we're gonna dump down off the point. It started to thunder a little bit in the distance, so we're gonna drop a little lower and uh, maybe set up the tarp if we need to, if it starts to rain here. But today the temperatures are supposed to drop, obviously this evening, and then tomorrow's supposed to be a lot cooler. So hopefully tonight it gets a little more active, and then tomorrow hopefully they're really ramping it up. But we're gonna move down and wait for them to come out tonight. starting to rain pretty good right now, but those elk just came out on the far hillside and I'm pretty sure it's the big bull. This might be our chance.
during our calling and setup, it started to rain heavy again. So we didn't get much footage in fear of ruining the camera. Long story short, the bull came most of the way down the hill, but wouldn't step out into the meadow at the bottom. I feel like we tried to call him too far away from his cows, and they eventually fed up the hill and out of sight. So we headed back to camp, cold and wet. We just woke up. Basically, everything we own is soaking wet, so we're going to make one last play on this bull right up the hill. And then we're heading out. So, who knows? He's not far. Maybe we'll get one. At this point, we were about 5 to 10 minutes into calling when we could tell the bugles were starting to get closer. We also now had another bull bugling over the ridge behind us. This new bull was quite a ways away, but the closer bull had started to commit. Unfortunately, we made the mistake of losing visual between caller and shooter, which we typically try to avoid. The bull got to within about 60 yards, but we needed him to come another 10 yards in order to get a shot. Because I lost visual with my dad, I continued calling and raking a tree when I probably should have been quiet. The bull could tell something wasn't quite right and slowly slipped down the ridge and across the hillside we had just came from. Elk hunting is pretty much a roller coaster ride of highs and lows. After being so close on the last setup and now bouncing over to the next range just minutes later, you don't really expect another close encounter so soon. But as quickly as we messed up the last effort, this one was starting to come together.
He was starting to come down the hill naturally already, so as soon as I let out that first bugle, things started to happen fast. We got set up. I looked over and he, he was now at the bottom of the draw. So I didn't know if he was going to come up on our side or not. But as soon as he came up, he started bugled again. So I knew he was coming and I seen the tips of his antlers on the hill. So I stood up for a shot. But this deadfall right here, I couldn't shoot through it. So I thought, oh shit, he's gonna get by me and I'm not gonna get a shot. So that's when I re reposition. I was hoping not to knock any rocks over and he'd hear me. And I got to just pass this tree for a shot. And he wasn't a wide open. It was a good shot. It was a wide open shot anyway. So he took off running like he was hurt. So I'm feeling good about it. I, I, I do hear it go whack. And it hit him. Yeah. And he took off on a death run that looked like it was a good angle, but he was starting to go up towards Adam. He probably got perfect. He should have a camera really. <laughs> I wonder why he's not over here. He had to see him run off. This is way lower than I thought he was. Let me show you something. He's not bleeding real. A lot. He, I don't know how much we should push him because he. I don't think so either. I think we should wait. 
a look at. I think it was a perfect shot. After you shot, I, I was able to film him for a little bit. <laughs> Maybe he was standing okay. down there. Okay. Right there he is. You can see the blood spot. Well, it's up there mid-body anyway, isn't it? It's right in the pocket. He stood there for quite a while, and then I think you guys might have bumped him when you started coming down the hill. Well, his tracks are like he's walking, so... Yeah, he was. He stood there for probably 10 minutes. I mean, it looks like a lethal shot to me. Well, I say we just take a break and... Have a snack. A snack? I didn't bring anything. <laughs> oh, I came prepared. I got my lung jaws in my bowl and all the land. <laughs> well, we could backtrack and see if we can find my arrow. Yeah. As long as we're waiting. You can sit and have a snack first, though. I'll mark this spot with my phone. I marked where I was, and then I'll mark this spot just so we don't lose it. Well, right now we got an arrow in one. That's a lot closer than we've come. He's a nice one, too. I, I don't know how big, but... He's, he wasn't that big one up on the hill, though, I don't think. Do you? I think he was. I don't know. I tried not to focus on antlers. The, the last thing I remember is I called, and he was coming, and I thought he was going to be way too low for you. So I started, and I didn't get very far because I could see him, but I, I went up maybe another 10 yards... And I let out one last bugle just to try to get his attention maybe up here. But I don't even know if I should have done that because he was not far. And then I immediately hid behind the log. <laughs> well, once I got around that evergreen, it was a wide open shot pretty much. What what happened after the last time I bugled? Because he was only 50 yards. Oh, he, he was just marching up the hill. He was coming looking for you. And actually, when he got around the side of the hill, he actually started coming up the hill towards you. He was coming up. Oh, I thought he was way too low for you, but if he was only 30, 40 yards, that was oh. picture perfect. Yeah, I'd say maybe 40 yards, probably. A mini celebration. <laughs> Speak up! <laughs> Holy balls! The old solo cam finally found its mark. <laughs> six by six. I'll take them. First elk. It's going to throw up here. Who would have thought when I went to bed last night? Soaking wet. Oh. Grab your long underwear, your son's long <laughs> underwear, 
and your bow and head up the hill after the bugles. Hopefully that 90% chance of rain holds off. <clears throat> That that royal on his right side is impressive. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, up down. September. Not for my first tag. What's the date today, Adam? 21, 22? <laughs> I'll have to check my phone, Adam. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's uh, no, you're fine. the 22nd. 2-2. Two, two. Lucky 2-2, two, two, huh? <laughs> I think most people would agree that elk hunting can be physically and mentally exhausting, especially with archery equipment, but I think that's what makes it so appealing. That coupled with the logistics of planning an out-of-state hunt and the adventure of the unknown. Lots of elements have to fall into place in order to be successful. This was my dad's ninth year bow hunting for elk. Nine Septembers. And this year it finally came together. Now there's a number of different reasons he didn't fill tags during a few of those years, but I'm not going to get into those details. If you've elk hunted before, you know the details. I simply wanted to acknowledge the time commitment and effort that went into this moment. For those that think hunting is just killing, you couldn't be more wrong. They say nothing brings people closer together than shared suffering. Well, and even though this trip wasn't the toughest that I can remember, it was the pinnacle of a grinding nine-year journey for my dad. This hunt was also the first time my brother, my dad, and myself were all together for a harvest and a pack out, which was pretty special. I would argue that hunting brings me closer together with my dad and brother more than anything else. Every time I'm able to watch this film, look at that bull's antlers, or pull an elk steak out of the freezer, I'm reminded of this hunt and these memories. And that's what hunting is about. Amen. This elk is going back to Wisconsin. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the film. <laughs>